tonight with a look into the mind of Jacob Wetterling's killer through the eyes of the FBI. Danny Heinrich led agents to the location in Painesville where they found Jacob's remains nearly 27 years after his kidnapping. Special agent in charge of the FBI, Richard Thornton, told our Jennifer Merrily they needed leverage to get him to talk. And that leverage was the federal child pornography case against Danny Heinrich. Richard Thornton told me the tide turned after a judge threw out a motion to suppress evidence in that case, and Heinrich realized he faced a lengthy prison sentence. He called Heinrich a sociopath and offered insight into his motives. Richard Thornton calls the week leading up to Danny Heinrich's courtroom confession extraordinarily challenging and intense. It was literally a 24-7 thing for all of us that were involved in that. It was, you know, it, uh, you, know you, could, uh, you could make a television drama or a movie drama out of that. The special agent in charge of the FBI felt strongly Heinrich kidnapped Jacob Wetterling in 1989. A carefully crafted deal, as well as Heinrich's need to control the situation, resulted in him leading agents to Jacob's remains in this Painesville pasture. He was walking in as if he was sort of a man on a mission. You know, he, he knew exactly where he was going until he got there. And I think it, it, it struck him that it doesn't look the same way it did 25 plus years ago. And, you know, it almost, you know, kind of stopped in his tracks. And you could tell that, you know, he was sort of, you know, trying, reassessing, uh, you know, you know, again, what he was seeing didn't match up with what he expected to see. Investigators needed to help Heinrich retrace his steps. The next day, the 53 year old told them for the first time what happened the night he kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and killed Jacob. It's an admission he would recount days later under oath. Do you believe his story? I substantially believe the story. I think there are there are always things. Every everybody spins things to be slightly more favorable to themselves. Only he knows whether he you know, went to that you know start, committed that crime with the intention of ending that way, or whether it truly was that he was panicked based on seeing the the police car roll by. And well, Heinrich's confession was chilling. What may be equally so is how Thornton describes him: a horrible human being, a, a narcissist who is only concerned about, you know, is what he wants when he wants it, you know, without any any regard for, you know, how it impacts, you know, anyone else or anything else. A man who Thornton says we now know time and time again showed his true colors. This was not an aberration. This was not uh, somebody who simply made a mistake. This is somebody who was calculated, um, you know, was, was very comfortable with abusing other people for his own pleasure. Now, Thornton became the special agent in charge two years ago, so he wasn't around in the early years of the investigation. He was candid in saying once the emotions of this case settle, the FBI will look at what could be have been done differently if there were missed opportunities, as well as what the pitfalls of the case were, Frank. Well, good for them. Maybe they can all kind of learn from it for the mm -hmm. future. Jen, thanks. In exchange for his confession, Danny Heinrich will go to prison for up to 20 years. A judge will sentence him in November. Today, Governor Mark Dayton ordered the I-35W bridge to glow blue in honor of Jacob Wetterling. It will be lit for 11 nights starting tomorrow. The number 11 was Jacob's jersey number, and the blue represents child abuse prevention. The bridge will stay illuminated until September 25th, which is the night of Jacob's memorial service. Save so at WCCO, we will have continuing coverage of the Jacob Wetterling case.